This video has been produced as part of the Records Access Documentation Project, funded by the Department of Families, Housing, Community Services and Indigenous Affairs to help improve access to the records of forgotten Australians and former child migrants. In videos 1 and 2, we looked at Document in your Archival Collection, which is the first step in allowing people to access their records. In this video, we aim to highlight the what where, and the how of releasing records, which can often be the start of an emotional journey for those seeking information about their time in care. Firstly, the what. Records which are released are often from a number of sources and have been created for a range of purposes. As such, there is a need to explain the record at the time of release. This explanation includes the story of the record how and why the record was created, and who created it, as well as the story in the record, the context in which the record was created, what its contents might mean, and its relationship to the care lever. In addition to the concept of a child's file, there are often a lot of other records which can help fill in the gaps about a child's time in care. For example, annual reports, minutes of meetings, staff files, superintendents' reports, organisational histories, and in particular, photographs. These records give background information about the organisation and can help to make sense of the details of a personal file. Next, the where. The Forgotten Australians report recommends that support and counselling services be available at the time of release and after as required and be available from an independent source if the care lever does not wish to access those services provided by the former care provider. As part of the Find and Connect program, Faxia has funded a national network of support services to assist care levers in locating and assessing records. These independent services can help those who are in out-of-home care locate personal records, access personalised support, connect with other support networks, and reconnect with family where possible. Whether people prefer to have records released to them by you or an alternative service, what is important is that they have a say in how the release of records occurs. The process of records release can occur over long periods of time, and the ability to develop and maintain an ongoing relationship is important. And finally, the how. There are often additional barriers to someone's legal right to access records about their time in care. These can include proof of identity requirements and interpretations of the Privacy Act. The principle of supported access, as recommended by the reports on forgotten Australians and former child migrants, should include a clear pathway to accessing records. As such, the application process should be as straightforward as possible and ID requirements should not be overly rigorous. Interpretations of the Privacy Act should be based on care lever needs. For example, when providing copies of photographs, it is possible to explain to the person accessing those records the ways in which they can make use of that photograph, rather than restricting their access to it. Another model which some organisations choose to adopt is to provide access to all information that a child not in out-of-home care would generally be expected to know. There are no hard and fast rules regarding access, and there are differences of opinion among groups of organisations and among care leavers, forgotten Australians and former child migrants. Beyond compliance with legislative requirements, a common sense approach is required so that people who were in care are able to access any records they are entitled to access in the way they feel is most appropriate at that time.